are good for the spoiler-free talk, right? Okay. That's enough for you guys that are too lazy or poor to get to a movie theater <laughs> <laughs> by now. Uh, so you should see it. If you haven't seen it, you know what are you doing listening? What are you doing watching this or listening to this right now? Get don't out. don't disrespect yourself by bootlegging this. Don't 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 do that. That's just just. You know, if if you're not really into this and everything, however you see it, you that's how you see it. You know, it's a free country. There's some stuff you should pay for. This <laughs> this is one of the ones you yes, should. Yes, this is a, this is an experience that you know you'll like. Like I was talking about um, being in a theater mm. and actually being around a kind of crowd of people. You don't get that experience, and people talk about the movie going experiences, dying, and everything. That experience I had in the movie theater with this particular movie in in, in particular is is unforgettable. You know, the cheering and like the roo rah rah rah, you yeah. know, on certain parts and everything. It's um it's it's unprecedented. So without further ado, we'll we'll, we'll cap the uh we'll cap the spoiler free section here. Okay. Um one last question I have for you, because the answer for me is yes. Okay. Are you gonna see this movie again in the theaters? Yes. Okay, there you go. So that's as, that's as strong as an endorsement <laughs> as you can really give a movie, I think. I'm going to see it Absolutely. twice, and I'm going to be happy to pay for it twice. So uh, so if you are one of the people that are just checking in to see what everyone's thinking about the movie and you're watching here, make sure you subscribe. Yep. Subscribe, or... And, and I think it would be a nice bit, Sam, if you would put these... Never put the buttons and the links where I think they're going to be. Just move them around everywhere so I look dumb. Just oh, yeah, 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 face. yeah. I got you covered. It's a, here, it's a know. great bit. Make uh, sure you subscribe and follow us. You know, um, um, you know, you can go onto our website, yeah. like Scott was saying. Mm -hmm. uh, everything is right there on nerdcyclopedia.com for you to access. And not just podcasts. Not just these sweet, sweet videos with excellent production values. Shameless plug. We are also talking about, <laughs> about reviews, blogs, and maybe even some fiction. Yep. So we're getting that all together. And creator spotlights. Creator spotlights. We do interviews with local creators, independent voices, mm -hmm. original stories, which is what Cos we like the Cosplayers, most. you know, people who actually support this genre, mm -hmm. you know, that, that we've got to recognize. So You'll see our pictures from cons. You'll see us, you know, just doing nerd stuff. And if you want to join in the conversation, we'd love to have you. Yes, we'd love to hear from you. Do. Uh, so feel free to, you know, contact us. We'd love to hear, uh, hear what you think. And from this point on... Spoilers. There is no going Scott back. Let, Scott put the lid on me in the beginning. Now yeah. I am ready. We are going to enter the quantum realm <laughs> and go to this quantum universe where everybody that's watching this video has seen this stupid movie. All right, so don't <laughs> don't go to the other realm where you haven't seen it yet. Don't turn me into a baby, please. No promises. All right, all right. Welcome back. If you're here, that means that you stuck around to listen to the spoiler section, watch the spoiler video. Uh, so, um, there's so many endings to this movie. It's like a Return of the King situation, right? Yes, that, oh man, I'm so glad you mentioned that. Yeah. This is the, in, the, the tone, the, the, the tones of this ending and everything is definitely Return of the King. Mm -hmm. the, the scale of the drama. Yes. Uh, the sort of the stakes of what's going on because, mm -hmm. I, at, at, almost at the end of this movie, they raise the stakes further <laughs> than they were. It's like, in, yeah. it's incredible that right. they, they set everything up like that. Mm -hmm. Uh, let's kind of, let's kind of talk about highlights here. So, okay. So let me ask you: If you had to pick, uh -huh. what was your favorite little, what was your favorite little bit in this movie? What okay, did you like I, the I, I would say my because because it's two things. I the the favorite, my favorite bit, mm. which is what you asked, and then my the the most thing that affected me the most. So first, you can answer the question I asked, and then you can answer the question I will. You answer, me to I will ask. ask uh, I will answer my question <laughs> after I answer it. Is okay. We keep it fifty fifty here. That's how it works. All right, that's how we do it in nursing. Yeah, that's people. right. And this studio right. is, it is a democracy. Um, so my favorite bit was when Cap picked up the hammer okay. and threw it and, you know, Thor was like, I knew it. <laughs> that paid off a little bit joke. Uh -huh. That was a bit joke in Age of Ultron. So, you know, Josh Whedon put that joke in there, and I thought it was a really great, great thing in Age of mm -hmm. Ultron where everybody tried to lift a hammer, and Cap was the only one that, that you know, sort of moved it a little bit, and Thor got a little bit worried. But, um... That turned into something that was very integral that really paid. That was ultimate fan service when, you know, Cat picked up the hammer and it was like such a cheer in my show. Uh -huh. You know, that was like a moment where, you know, um, LeBron or somebody shot the <laughs> shot, you know, and made like, you know, won the game and everything. Yeah. He picked up that hammer and did his thing. He's wheeling it. Oh, man, it was it was an awesome thing for me. Yeah, I like that a lot. Uh, the whole "Are you worthy?" You uh -huh. know, finding out who's worthy in the universe is really great. <laughs> Always a lot of fun. Um, my favorite, my favorite personal like funny bit was uh -huh. definitely uh, like uh, like erudite Hulk Hulk having to Hulk smash in twenty twelve <laughs> and being like, eh. like, eh. <laughs> like I don't really want. 
Uh, I like that a lot. I thought, I thought that was one of those homages that was really funny because obviously yeah. the character went a long way. Mm-hmm. And I want to say this too. Mark Ruffalo did a really awesome job awesome. playing that character. Yeah. yeah. And you can really tell that that's who they cast, right? Right. They right. cast Mark Ruffalo to play the right. the, the recombinated version of uh, Bruce Banner and the Hulk. The, right, right. The, the remember, Hulk. remember during this thing, it was Ed Norton. And right. then they had to end up recasting it because Norton didn't, you know, they had to dispute and everything. They just had to put Ruffalo in there. Such a great choice and decision. Oh, what a great casting. And so, and that's something that was really, really neat. I liked, so I liked all the Hulk stuff, actually. Uh-huh. I really liked the bit where uh, they were in the cafe, they were in the, like, the diner. You're right, and, right. Like, they yeah. came over to take a picture. <laughs> and they was like, I'm Ant-Man if you want to take a picture of me. I like that a lot. Like, you know, I don't, they don't know who I am and everything. I'll take a picture. Take, take the photo. <laughs> You'll take the everything. photo. I, I'm not going to lie. It was a little... I, it, ha- it took me a minute to get used to to to, to Doctor Banner Hulk, right? right you know, because right. I'm so used to Hulk being just all you know, all right, Hulk and everything. But he was a mixture of Banner, Ruffalo's face, mm-hmm. and you know, big screen, you know, big green giant and everything. And he's lovable and like you know, jokey and everything. You're not used to really Hulk talking, yeah. But they paint that off with how he began in, in Thor Ragnarok. Right. You know, he, right. he sort of transitioned and started talking and joking and everything. Now he's full in between. So they didn't really have to go into, you know, why he was like that. You know, it was just um, a thing that they started in Infinity War that they was going to have to work some things out. And this is where they worked out. Yep. Like Hulk wouldn't show up in Infinity no, War, right? No, uh-uh. So totally new Hulk because the uh, the Hulk he couldn't control couldn't mm-hmm. fight the answer. Right. right. Uh, so super duper nifty. So let's talk a little bit about some of the plots. So okay. So uh, for me, the opening of this movie was a, was a shock. I mean, I, really? I, I felt I felt so. I don't mean to say blindsided, like I couldn't okay. deal with it, but okay. I, I didn't expect them to do a okay. time jump. Okay. I didn't expect them to. to so well, 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 back up a little bit. Yes. What did you think about the very first moment, like how it actually began with Hawkeye? Oh, with Hawkeye? Well, so I was in this drive-in, and they didn't play any, like, fanfare for it. Uh-huh. So I honestly was like, uh-huh. I couldn't tell what it was. Right. <laughs> I was like, a, like an ad uh-huh. or something. Uh-huh. And then I was like, I was like, oh, that's Jeremy Renner. <laughs> 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 like, he's got an ankle monitor on. I was like, yeah. I was like, you know, who's this guy? Who's, I was like, uh-huh. oh, yeah, that's Hawkeye. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I thought that was a really great way to show, like, what that what that was like and experience it elsewhere, right? Yeah. To, yeah. Feel the, to be elsewhere and, and find out. You know that the decimations happen and all these people are just right. vanished. Right, right, right. right. You don't. You, you, he didn't know anything that was going on, anything of whatsoever. Mm-hmm. Now all of a sudden it went left. All leftovers for those of you know who've seen the leftovers. Yeah. All of a sudden, family just disappears. Absolutely. And, and it was just devastating. And then Captain Marvel shows up, and they they go and they basically get justice on Thanos, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Which felt felt like catharsis. And it felt like the real end of that the first movie, and I understand why they cut it where they cut it for mm-hmm. the production and for the release. But for me, when I'm rewatching these in a year or two, mm-hmm. I'm going to probably call the that point right. <laughs> That's the end of Avengers three. Yeah, and Avengers four is after the time. Yeah, yeah. Right, and it would make sense that there would be a good twenty right. minutes of some other movie attached to this movie because it right. was three hours long. Well, I guess technically, by what you're saying, they could have really cut that down by attaching it to the other movie, like you said, but. Um, I, I like the way they structured it, you know, mm-hmm. with bringing Captain Marvel and 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 one thing I'm actually thinking about as we're talking, the end of Captain Marvel with that teaser that they had and this movie sort of didn't really make any sense to me, mm-hmm. you know, like how um they, they you know Captain Marvel at the end of Captain Marvel that little post credit she asked where Nick Fury was right where's so Fury? yeah where's Fury so that really that section didn't really and it's a little nitpicky. But that section really didn't pay off as much as, you know, it just didn't really make sense on how she appeared in this movie when in the last movie she came in just asking, where the hell is Nick Fury? Right. You know, where where is he at and everything? Um, so she followed the signal to the pager. Yeah, she followed. Then, well, we, we all know that's why she came right, in. Right, right, But um, she came in with um, um, Tony mm-hmm. and Nebula, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, she went and got them. That's how. That's how she. Yeah, she. That's she how went she and fetched him. Yeah, she fetched him. But in the in the Captain Marvel, she was came was like near where is I? I don't know. Nitpicky. That's just a little. So she nitpicky. came back to Earth, then she went back to get Tony, then she brought Tony. To oh, Earth. okay. Yeah. Okay. You explained it for me. Plot hole solved. Plot hole <laughs> closed. <laughs> <laughs> Loophole tightened. But I, I did like the way that um you know Thor they she. When when she did come, mm-hmm. um, everybody was right, a little suspicious of her and everything. Right, right, and right. Thor came with his hammer, like you've seen in the trailers and commercial. It was like, you know, I like this one. And um, 
you know, the beginning of that sort of put them into a position where they were like real. Um, there was a couple days. It happened a couple days after the decimation or the, the snapping or whatever. Right. Um, and they had to figure out what the hell was going on, you know. Mm -hmm. And to have a raccoon, <laughs> an <Right>. alien, you <laughs> know, that that they haven't really experienced aliens before this, right? You know, right. Um, so to have that combination of them coming together and everything, I thought was just great. I really liked Rocket a lot in this movie. I love Rocket. Rocket's man. so funny. Oh uh, my god! Man, Bradley Cooper's doing that. good work. Oh man, he's doing good work. With that I character. love Rocket Raccoon. Very funny. Funny yes. rabbit, right? Funny, funny rabbit. Yeah, funny rabbit. So, funny so rabbit. they go get justice on Thanos. Yeah. Thor cuts his head off, and it messes Thor up a oh, little man. bit for whatever reason. <laughs> uh, yeah, know. we see Thanos on the farm picking up yeah, corn or whatever, yeah. whatever he was picking Farming. up. Farming. <laughs> you know. Uh, Thor has destroyed the Infinity Stones. Mm -hmm. oh, I'm sorry. Thanos has destroyed the Infinity Stones, slip of the tongue. Yeah. And so there's nothing they can do to bring the stones back in their reality. And so they all have to move on. So it cuts to five years later, and we find a world that's just still reeling from the effects of the yeah. decimation, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, Cap, Cap is doing, um, you know, therapy work with, you know, um, AA work or whatever. Group therapy. Group, group therapy and group everything. Group therapy for Captain America. A dude that lived through World War II, a literal time when a lot of people's friends were just getting oh, man. killed all the time, right? Like, like, that's where he's from. That's his origin, right? Cap, Cap, yeah, that's his origin. But also, it's a callback to what... Um, what um, Sam Wilson was doing mm -hmm. um, with their group therapy work back in uh, right. Winter Soldier. Right. So that was a great callback for him. Sam has That's disappeared, right. and now it's Cat doing the group therapy work with folks. So I thought that was a great, you know, circle art callback. And That's everything. awesome. So many callbacks in this movie. It was. It felt. It really felt like closing the loop, right? Yeah. Uh -huh. Which is good because what happens is they need to open a loop. To get everything back, pretty much, yeah. So Scott Lang or Paul Rudd comes, just comes flying out of a, <laughs> out of a van. Hold on, hold on. The so, so, so a rat, yeah, is, by accident. If, if nothing happens, if not for this rat <laughs> that accidentally <laughs> returns Scott back to the present, yeah. Well, they say know. the best laid pans in my suit. Oh, right? <laughs> pretty much. That's yeah. funny. So, so Scott comes back, and and and, and the scenes where he's sort of kind of getting the band back together uh -huh. where they're getting the Avengers back together yeah. and you find out everything that's happened in the intervening five years how mm -hmm. you know Black Widow is sort of running the shield desk agency and you've got Captain Marvel out about You're sort right. of doing the whole galaxy wide thing sort of like mm -hmm. a Green Lantern sort of situation yeah. for her right um but they, de they determine that they can if they can they can go back in time because the quantum realm deals with time differently mm -hmm. than the, the temporal realm mm -hmm. and so they Tony Stark invents a time GPS, and we find that Tony and Pepper have a daughter. Yeah, and yeah. Tony doesn't want to leave the life that he's built. Now. Yeah, he's that happy. that was you know everybody well, as happy else. As you can be after the decimation. Well, everybody else is all messed up. Mm -hmm. Tony's life has progressed. He's gotten to a point where you know at first, way back in Iron Man, he's just all about himself and everything. Mm -hmm. Now he's grown up to a point where he has a family now, despite everybody else's family right. <laughs> being snapped. Yeah. You know, he has a family now, and he doesn't want to let that go. Right. Uh, so, so he invents. So Tony figures out how to do the mo the the, the right. time GPS, mm -hmm. and it's best to just call these MacGuffins what they are. Uh, no point in trying to get into the. I'm science. still confused. I don't. Know the <laughs> uh, so the time GPS lets them go uh, through the quantum realm. Yeah. And go back in time. Right. Um, the way they do it, and I know we've talked about my time travel dislike. Yeah. But yeah, yeah. this type of time travel is okay because really they're mm -hmm. doing a Rick and Morty style. <laughs> they move from one universe to another. Uh -huh. So they're going to a different dimension. So it's, it makes sense. Yeah. That the, these other as, dimensions. As much sense as it's going to make. These other dimensions will be offset in time from ours. They right. aren't all happening simultaneously, but they are. Anyway, don't worry about it. So. <laughs> So they decide, Let's just go with it. So they get the band back together. Yeah. I, I got to tell you, these, these scenes with Thor uh -huh. in New New Asgard oh, man. Were, man. were just ridiculous. Oh, I mean, man. Yeah. I like yeah. all the Xbox stuff. Yeah. The guy, yeah. The guy, he called me a dickhead. Oh, man. It, it was great to see them two again <laughs> and everything. You I know, know right? going out, just using characters from yeah. other movies and making them actually, va you know, uh, putting a value into this movie um, made a whole lot of sense, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. to for Thor 
his character has grown so much since like the Dark World. So yeah. I mean, if it, and it actually just goes to show you, um, they could have threw out the baby with the bathwater after the Dark World, but they stuck with it. Said they were going to make another Thor movie, and it paid off big time oh, for, sure. for his development in the, in these last two movies. As far as the offsetting tone, yeah. because you could have had a really big, serious tone throughout this whole movie, yep. if not for Thor, yep. Rocket, mm -hmm. and Ant Man. Yeah, that's true. They got the right tone there. Um, I want to say this: uh -huh. Chris Hemsworth wore a fat suit to work every <laughs> single day on this movie. What? He kept it totally a secret from me. I had no idea. He looks he's in worse shape than me in this movie, right? <laughs> like I'm not, I'm not. I'm not. Listen, this isn't a brag. I'm not in great shape, but. You know, he looked like a, he looked like me, and like this body type up there. So it was really one empowering to see that, uh, to see that you Very can be you, sort of out of shape and still be a and, and still be a hero. Yeah. You know? um, so Thor's messed up emotionally. I guess he has PTSD kind of from killing Thanos. Yeah. Not he, being able he's, to stop Thanos. He's he's and and that in that um in that prelude or whatever in the mm. beginning of the movie he was all jacked up. You didn't see any of that Thor. You saw old Thor. Yeah. And then as we got into the five years later, you know, we see like, you know, happy drunk. Well, not happy drunk, but de depressed more, drunk. Depressed right. drunk. Dealing with a severe depression. Right. But the way he deals with depression is through humor. Through humor and sarcasm. Yes. And bitterness. Yes. And just getting hammered drunk. Right. Right. Uh, which he's one to do is the god of a, you know, Norse mythology. <laughs> they are, yeah, they are imbibers. Yeah. Yeah. yeah <laughs> for for yeah. sure. Right. Um. So they get the band back together and they decide, hey, if we can go back through time, we can go to alternate dimensions where there are infinity stones. We know where they are because we've all encountered them. So we've all bumped into these infinity stones. So we know where they are in the past. We mm -hmm. know where we can get to them before Thanos. Mm -hmm. So there's this middle part of this movie mm -hmm. that's this heist piece where they all, all the surviving Avengers pair up and team up and go back through time to go find... Um, the Infinity Stones to bring them back to their reality. The time heist. The time heist. So it's a great way to call back to the first movie, Infinity War, mm -hmm. where it was a Thanos heist for getting all the um, you know, Infinity Stones and everything. Mm -hmm. So that was a heist in itself, you know, throughout that movie. Everybody was chasing Thanos. Thanos was getting trying to get all these Infinity Stones. Now this movie um is a time heist trying to get all those back. Before. They're before, trying to, before, you're trying to, before. to yes. just co-op, like grab, yank him out from under his nose, right? Yes, yes, yes. And so, yes. so they go to all these different realities, and we see them intersect with their prior selves mm -hmm. in the Avengers and in the beginning of Guardians of the Galaxy, which right. when they cut away from... Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, <laughs> Cut yeah, away to, yeah. to him just dancing around by himself. <laughs> and he just knock him out. Yeah, I mean, it, it was a moment where, okay, when they started playing that music, you know, yeah, you yeah. just got happy because I remember when that first came out, right. you know, you was just like, oh, man, this is about to be a really good life. Fun. Fun, fun, weird. fun movie. It's a comic book movie, but it is. Yes. That's what's yes. great about Guardians. Yes. yes. And that they brings they, they keep a lot of that like sort of spin. Yeah. And when you find out how important the characters from that that you know from that movie are, right. I mean that's the beginning of really our, our real introduction to Thanos, Gamora, uh -huh. uh, Nebula, all the um, space Rocket, stuff, all the all the galactic, galactic stuff. The stuff. Kree right. show up for the first right. time in that oh, movie, man. right? Expanding the universe. Yes. Yeah. The so, Kree show up. Yep. So mm -hmm. so to see that pay off here where. You know, the reason we are seeing all that, the reason those stories are important is because mm -hmm. that is where the power stone is. And yes. finding that out later, right. mm -hmm. I'm sorry about the sound of the clapping. <laughs> uh, finding that out later was just a really awesome callback to know this is why we're doing it, right? Right. This is right. why we spent all this time right. in space with this raccoon. Right. <laughs> we I, went to I, space I, jail. I, I, I remember during those times where, you know, it was, uh, while those movies were really great, it was still a lot of complaints from critics about, okay, why are we spending so much time with these Infinity Stones? Mm -hmm. You know, the, 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 let's just concentrate on the movies and stuff. That is an old way of, or traditional way of making movies. Mm -hmm. Marvel has shown you that there's another way. You, it's maybe not a way that you like it, but it's another way in making movies that, um, that was untested and a lot of people really had doubts about. Mm -hmm. You know, concentrating on stuff like in Age of Ultron, right. you know, there was a scene with Thor um, in, a, in, in a cave scene, I believe, that had to do with some Infinity Stones um, that pays off with this movie. Mm -hmm. If you didn't have the stuff before, you don't have everything now. So um, when when um, you know when they're when they're talking about these Infinity Stones, like what the hell? What's up with these Infinity Stones? Why do we even need these in these movies and everything? Mm -hmm. Well, here we are. Exactly right. So <clears throat> so the high. So we have um, mm -hmm. so we have uh, you know. Rhodey, uh -huh. and we have Nebula going after, um, man, I'm going to get lost on which stones. They're going after one stone. They're going yeah. after the power stone. Yeah. The purple stone. Mm -hmm. uh, we have 
all the stones in New York. So we have Hulk and Cap and Iron Man mm-hmm. going after the stones in New York City. So the mm-hmm. Tesseract and the Mind Stone, which is in the uh, Scepter. Right. And then you have uh, what well, you have. Um, oh, you have uh, Black Widow and Hawkeye uh-huh. going after the Soul Stone. Right. So I want to talk a bit for a second about that that okay. particular piece. Okay. Because it felt to me like two people going out to dinner and each one trying to pay the check. <laughs> they, you know, they're like, no, I'll get it. No, I'm gonna get it. No, I'm gonna pay this check. No, you are not gonna pay this check. Yeah. That whole that whole back and forth to see which actor wanted out of the franchise <laughs> uh, was yeah, super interesting. It, uh, what did you think about about the uh, the exit of Scarlett Johansson from the? I, I actually the have a bit of a problem with it. Um, um, I think for that actress, um, I think I think it was it. it Plot wise, it would made sense, you know, because we seen in the Infinity War that Thanos, you, if they were going to travel there, mm. somebody had to be sacrificed, right? You know, um, and for them to choose it to be Hawkeye and Scar, and um, Haw- Hawkeye and um, um, Black Scarlet? Widow, Black Widow, and everything was a um interesting choice. Somebody was not going to be, you know, someone was not going to leave without you know having to die because we saw that's what happened with Gamora and Thanos, right? You know, when she when he shoved her over the thing. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. so for them to choose to have Black Widow die like that and not really have her the rest of the movie because she's one of the original Avengers, you know, from this MCU franchise was sort of a little eh, anticlimactic to me. I okay. mean, it was a little, a little, it was a little disappointed because I would, I would have, you would have thought that she would have had to play a bigger role in the end, yeah. especially, you know, we're going to get to that point, but they had a really great group female scene mm-hmm. that she was not mm-hmm. a part of. Yeah. You know, and I'm and I'm sitting there like, okay, it would have been nice to have Black Widow in this portion of the movie, but they chose to have her in that in that portion of the movie dying. So um I have a little I have a little, if if it was a nitpicky thing I had to say with this movie, I had a problem with that. So would you have would it have been better or if it would have been a Hawkeye? Would you have preferred I mean, would you have preferred that or would you have preferred another mechanism? Well maybe another mechanism. But if if that was who they were going to go with with that particular scene, I guess I would have preferred Hawkeye. Okay, you know, throw a red skull over. That's what I say. <laughs> yeah, just, throw, just throw a red skull over. <laughs> you cannot beat me, Captain America. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure the guy playing that love playing that voice again. And everything. Hugo Weaving, man. The guy no, was actually, it the, was um, awesome. um no Hugo chose not to do this. Really, it was another guy. Uh, named Marshawn or something like that. He plays in Walking Dead. He does the uh, Red Skull stuff. Really? Now. Yeah, yeah. He was waiting me. He did not. He's he's he didn't come back for it. I didn't know that. You know. And the guy apparently he he does like real good impressions and was able to do a dead on Red Skull. I didn't he, even he, Hugo Hugo Weaving voice. So they got him to do this. I I didn't even notice. Quite frankly. <laughs> yeah. Uh, seamless. Very very good. Um. So they go get the song. That's kind of the most vanilla, easy to explain one, which is why I wanted to pick it. Mm-hmm. So they go. They get the Soul Stone to come back. Uh-huh. And they're using uh, Hank Pym's time traveling particles to go through the quantum realm. They only have one, enough for one trip for each of them, right? So they can't mess up, right? The big, the, the big action uh, that happens um, um, with Nebula getting stuck uh-huh. in the past because her mm-hmm. her network interfaces with her old self's network, okay? And she's too close, right? Like she's in the same solar system as mm-hmm. Thanos' ship, mm-hmm. so they can see everything she's seen, and so now Thanos knows everything she knows. <sighs> So Thanos past can see Thanos. the next past 2014 Thanos. Thanos. 2014 Thanos can see the next nine years, which is bad. Uh, <laughs> that is not good. Not great. So that's the big that's the big get from um, from that particular end of the plot is that Thanos now knows what's going on. Right. And Nebula is trapped in the past. Okay. So uh, in the New York stuff's really really interesting, and mm-hmm. that's probably my favorite bit of the whole. The, my favorite piece yeah. of the whole movie is them going back to 2012 New York because uh-huh. there were. Um, a couple Infinity Stones in New York, right? Yeah, the Tesseract yeah. and then the Scepter right. both in New York. Right. So they have to figure out how to get him. And um, also the Time Stone. Mm-hmm. So they send Hulk over to talk to Doctor Strange, who they think is in charge over at the Sanctum Santorum. Mm-hmm. Uh, is that what it's called? Yeah, Sanctum Santorum. <sighs> yep. Oh, I'm not it. really that big into Doctor Strange, so that's a good pull hey. for me. Oh, Tilda Swanson being oh, in yeah. this movie. So I... Yeah, so right, she right. she was still so the ancient one was still the uh, was still the supreme the yeah, sorcerer supreme at that time uh-huh. right so she knows who, she knows all the future I thought that was a great line where uh, so Hulk shows up and says yeah if you're five years too early if you're looking for <laughs> Doctor Strange he's about twenty blocks uptown doing a surgery uh, but she knows who he is yeah and yeah. she pulls pulls Bruce Banner out of Hulk's body which was a, a fun yeah, little that, little callback uh, uh, yeah that was a great thing it was a uh, um very funny how they had she had a really good chunk in this movie mm-hmm. that uh. First of all, I did not expect her. Right. She's a really 
you know, uh, pristine act- actress and everything. Yeah, she's one of those, like, art actresses. Oh, yeah, like, yeah, like, yeah. She's, like, totally, like, does method and gets totally, mm-hmm. like, dedicated to her piece. Um, so to see her in a genre film is always really great. Well, to see her come back, because she was already in Doctor Strange, right. to see her come back for this... In a cameo. Almost. In a cameo, and actually, not only just a cameo, she had a, actually a little bit more of extended, mm-hmm. you know, um, role, a, a real important role for this section of the movie... Uh, I was very surprised. Explaining essentially what yeah. they need to do. Like yeah. she, she yeah. her purpose is to explain. Well, you need to bring these things back. Right, right. Like you can't just <laughs> you can't and, just and, leave and, with and, and it was happening at the same time as far as the, uh, what was um, happening with the battle of New York. Right. So it was everything. She was battling different, um, you know, aliens mm-hmm, and Jatari mm-hmm. creatures and stuff. Just as everything was going on, so I thought that was pretty decent. Yeah. You know, as far as um, you know, relating everything to the battle of New York. Really neat. Um, the Cap and Tony stuff going to get uh, with Ant Man, of course. Ant Man's yeah. going yeah. to get the Infinity Stones. I'll tell you this: the, the Cap piece of that uh-huh. when he's standing in that elevator uh-huh. <laughs> with all the dudes he beats up in uh, Cap Two. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it went. It, you thought it was going to go one way, and if you've seen Winter Soldier, that's why I say it was so much fan service in the movie. Yeah. If you've seen Winter Soldier, you know how that ended. Yeah. To see, <laughs> to see Cap switch it up and flip it. And whispering to um, you oh, know, man. the guys here, Hail Hydra. That was Oh my god, that was And that's really great comic service too, because recently, like, you know, in the comics, Cap said Hail Hydra, like he was a an undercover yeah. Hydra uh-huh. A, a uh-huh. agent, which I guess paid off as he wasn't. Right. Uh, but seeing all the guys from the guys from Shield and uh-huh. then like chastising him, like, you didn't know these were the bad guys? Look uh-huh. at him. Like, uh-huh. <laughs> like They look like bad guys. They look like you know, bad Scott guys. Rudd, I mean, you know, um Scott Rudd. <laughs> Scott Lang, yeah. Paul Rudd, you know, he just was a, such a comedic performance in this movie. He's an American truck. Yeah, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. But yeah, he pointed out they they look like bad guys, don't they? <laughs> what are you doing? Yeah. <laughs> we didn't know yet, all right? Relax. <laughs> we didn't know yet. <laughs> uh, so, but so yeah, the elevator scene was awesome. That elevator scene, he walks out with the scepter. I mean, uh, so much so much great stuff going on. Oh, he had that um, grin on his face when he walked out. I was just, right. hey, that had my crowd just cracking up because it was such a payoff from that moment from you know Winter Soldier. Uh-huh. And then Loki steals the Tesseract, <sighs> which explains why Loki, Loki had the, the tesseract. tesseract at the beginning of uh, Avengers 3. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How did Loki get that? So you think yeah. he steals it from the uh, mm-hmm. so you think he steals it from the trophy room mm-hmm. and when uh, Hela calls it fake. Mm-hmm. Right? She says fake. That was the um the Infinity Gauntlet. Oh, the Gauntlet. No, no okay. that wasn't the Tesseract. But um but yeah, for when when he getting out nerded on my <laughs> when, when when he um you know picked up the, off the floor and everything was like, "Okay, I can you know, and then Went back. Um, yeah, that was that was a classic scene right there. You I, know. <laughs> I, had, I I really liked it uh, a lot. Um, Hulk is able to convince uh, the Sorceress Supreme to give him the Infinity Stone because he says that uh, Doctor Strange gave Thanos the F- Infinity Stone willingly, mm-hmm. and she realizes there's no way he could he wouldn't make a mistake because he doesn't. Right. Right. Because he doesn't make mistakes. Right. Right. Because he's driving a car. Right. Uh, so. She, uh, so they end up getting those Infinity Stones back. Loki steals the Tesseract. Uh-huh. And so Cap and Iron Man have to go back further to get the Tesseract uh-huh. back in the 70s when it was in that uh, right. secret military installation mm-hmm. in New Jersey where Cap was born. Okay. Right? <coughs> yeah. So we uh, Cap and Iron Man go back there. That's where we have uh, you know, Cap seeing Peggy mm-hmm. for the first time in 70 years. Which threw him. Which threw him for yeah. a loop. Yeah. And, uh, and Cap talking to his dad. Right. The Don, his birth day mm-hmm. like the day he was born mm-hmm. um to get the test right back uh super interesting scenes um you know the conversation between father and son about what fatherhood is and what uh, tony's dad yes yeah. howard and tony yeah howard. Uh, about you know what is fatherhood and what can you do and uh, yeah yeah that was very cathartic for tony you know because they didn't really have those type conversations and stuff you know right. um and back in iron man two or three one of those two i think you know he he just seen like um you know, footage of his dad. Right. You know, talking to him and everything. It was like a memory, right? Like a memory VR, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then um, this movie, he actually got to speak with him. Right. You know, so that was really decent. How about John Slider? He was not gray hair, right? Yeah, right. Weird you know, they they was trying to de. I think they de-aged him oh, a little that's bit okay. and everything. That's okay. One one very and for those who were really stuck with this, you know, on one great thing um, that I seen that I noticed. They had the Jarvis guy that was playing, the guy that was playing Jarvis, he was the actual guy playing Jarvis in the TV show Agent Carter. 
Oh, so yeah? that was awesome to see. It's just a little fan service, you know, That's for so those neat. who've seen the, all these things and everything. So it was the same Jarvis guy that was playing Jarvis in the, um, you know, Agent Carter TV show. Mm -hmm. So I thought that was like super decent too. Super neat. I mean, a lot. Everything's a neat, like a neat callback. Yeah, yeah. yeah everything, neat callback, everything neat makes sense. Service. It's almost like these little asides that we've been yeah. doing that you think are fun are really actually part of this bigger piece. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. Like I said, um, love letter to like the you know all the fans who've actually stuck with this movie. Absolutely. And promoting and you know hype this movie, these movies for all these years. Absolutely. So, um, so they get all the Infinity Stones together. Mm -hmm. They make their own sort of gauntlet, like Tony and uh, <laughs> Tony and Hulk get the gauntlet together. Yeah. Uh, they get all their Infinity Stones uh, together, and they snap back. Hulk snaps back everybody at the cost <laughs> of his, his right arm. Right, yeah. His right arm is now withered like Dumbledore's at the mm -hmm. end of a Harry Potter scene. <laughs> um, so Nebula is a fake Nebula. Yeah. It's past Nebula who's sent back by Thanos to mm -hmm. allow him to come, come through time. Mm -hmm. And he brings his whole ship somehow, mm -hmm. which seems like a cheat. Mm -hmm. That's a cheat code, don't you? Yeah. Yeah. And then uh, as soon as they snap everybody back, mm -hmm. uh, Thanos sort of carpet bombs the Avengers, uh, the Avengers <laughs> house. Yeah. Oh, he just, and just totally blows it all up, right? Yeah, he decimates that. And so that sets up the final, the final conflict of the film, which is Thanos versus uh, the Avengers on site, which seems the like a not... Thanos versus you know, uh, Thor, Captain, Thor and, and, Thor Cap and, and, and uh, Iron, Iron Man. Man. The, the original three. The original three. The big three. The big they three. have a big brawl with... Uh, a non-gloved, a non-begloved Thanos, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. right? Uh, so Thanos sort of at his regular power level. No Kyle Ken or Super Saiyan for Thanos uh, on this one. But the Thanos makes sure that he does his Thanos, um, you know, uh, uh, villain type, you know, um, yeah. um, talking and everything. You know, I, I love Josh Brolin as Thanos. Earth. and <laughs> He does his monologues. I'm going to make this personal. And then, like, my favorite thing is just It all a movie comes thing. back to me. It's a movie thing, right? And then they cut, and, like, you know, Cap gets up, and he starts walking toward Thanos. Uh -huh. They're 100 yards away from each other. Yeah. There's no way you could hear it. Like, you couldn't hear him talking like that. You'd have to, have to yell, yeah, especially yeah, right. with all the explosions and uh -huh. everything. Right, 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 right. Movies are fun. Yeah. Uh, that's a just Let's a just go thing. with it. Yeah, it's a, just a cool thing. Uh, so Hawkeye's running away from everyone mm -hmm. uh, with the uh, with the Infinity Gauntlet, mm -hmm. the well the Iron Man Infinity Gauntlet, yeah, two mm -hmm. I, I squared, right. Uh, and uh, I saw a a meme like right before I saw the movie, it said uh -huh. um it said uh, context free uh, Avengers spoilers, and it was like Barry Sanders being like, <laughs> <laughs> like you know what football, I mean? Like he's juking you know, and yeah, running right, away. Yeah, right, 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 right. Yeah, that's yeah, that's pretty much how it was. Uh, and just when it looks like. You know, Earth's mightiest heroes are about to be defeated, and Thanos is about to be victorious. Mm -hmm. um, suddenly, uh, the real plan of Doctor Strange comes to fruition, which is every single character that every snap back to life shows up all of a sudden out of portals and just the, mobs Thanos. The, the 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 dramatic way they did that was, I I I, I didn't expect it. So right. it was it was a way it was a real dramatic way. Because you you were thought you were thinking okay Thanos has his army and it's just the three of them right you know you already had the moment where Cap picked up the hammer yeah he already did the hammer you know thing. you already did the hammer thing so, so you he's know he's like smacking he's, he can wield he can wield Stormbreaker and he can wield yes hammer. yeah he can do Cap, them both. Cap is worthy he's very worthy. Thor knew it you know <laughs> I knew um, but you had that moment and everything so what could have they what could have they had done to to top this moment mm -hmm. so Cap hears Falcon in his ear it's like yeah. Cap. To on your six. I'm like, where's where's Falcon? Right. All of a sudden, everybody comes back. Yeah, everybody. everybody. From Black Panther, yeah. Spider Man, you know All um, your favorites. All your favorites, you know, <laughs> Doctor Strange, Guardians of the Galaxy. Yep. And for for a super dramatic effect, the camera just pans to everybody, uh -huh. the whole Wakanda crew, every every single Marvel character. You know, you know <laughs> except those, for Black Widow. Uh, oh, yeah, <laughs> you know those posters? You know, uh -huh. everyone knows this, these posters where the Avengers are coming on one side and the villains are coming on the yeah. other. You know what oh, I mean? Man, that's, they they that's pulled right that off they in a movie. They pulled that off in a movie. They made it make sense. Oh, they made man. it interesting, and they oh, made it worthwhile man. to yeah. see. Yeah, crazy. Yeah. Uh, we also crazy. get Spider Man. Spider Man carrying the ball. Yeah. So Spider Man grabs the gauntlet, and mm -hmm. he is sort of shepherded through Thanos' army by all uh -huh. the female MCU heroes, uh -huh. kind uh -huh. of coming, and sort yep. of you know. But do their bit in a really yep. nice little yeah, scene, like, yeah. you're, like yeah. you're referring to. This is what he was referring to about yeah. uh, mm -hmm. about Black Widow, mm -hmm. and 
Um, Thanos is able to get the gauntlet, uh-huh. but Captain Marvel shows up and just wrecks his ship right away. <laughs> it's something, you know, the, the coming into the atmosphere and everything, and all of a sudden it's Captain Marvel just... You know, she's the most powerful she's Marvel terrifying. character. Like she you is know. a terrifying. She is Thanos' lady. Yeah. You know, Thanos. You know, you know, her and you know, we got that Thanos and the Captain Marvel fight uh, that we've been, you know, clamoring for and everything. <laughs> and you know, Thanos just, you know, he he couldn't he couldn't beat her. I mean, I, I, it's a close call, right? Yeah, it's close. It's call. a close call. Mm-hmm. Thanos is able to pull. He pulls a power stone off of a gauntlet, holds it, and blasts her, <laughs> and then put tries to put it back. And Tony sort of sleight of hand like switches gloves with him, yeah, uh-huh. and ends up with the Infinity Gauntlet uh-huh. and snaps all of Thanos' people out of existence. And after that line at the end, where he goes, where Thanos goes, "I'm inevitable," and he doesn't have the stones, and then uh, then Tony goes, uh, I... "I am, I am Iron Man." Oh man, hey dude, that 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 got me. Yeah, right. You know, that was that 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 was that was very 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 emotional. The callback all the way, all to the, the end. way. Of the very first MCU movie, mm. for it to bookend like that is is it's a it's a long shot to call, right? That's like you, Damian Lillard style. Yeah, yeah, you y'all <laughs> man, you couldn't predict how the end, how the end, you know you couldn't predict the shot was going to go in, uh-huh. but you call it out. I mean, you you throw it up. This movie pays it off. Tony. Yep. Oh, you know, <laughs> you know, uh, um, game over. You know, walk off. Wow. Um, but yeah, great callback way to the beginning of Iron Man. You know, it was a very raucous crowd by that point. You know, yeah. my crowd was just. I mean, you just. So it was my crowd. My crowd was walking, walking too. <laughs> Smaller crowd. Uh. Great callback to that. Um, so yeah, Tony um snaps them all out Snap. of existence. Yeah. And Thanos is looking around like, oh, he's just. He's devastated. He's devastated. You know? the, his, him, he's, the, he's the Thanos that loses. He's not the Thanos that Yeah, wins. yeah, exactly, right? <laughs> he's the Thanos that loses. Like, what is, what is wrong with me that I couldn't win like this other Thanos? <laughs> weird. Time travel's weird, man. It, is, it, it was a unique way in the, okay, 2014 Thanos has to deal with all the, right. you know, stuff that his future right. Thanos, you know, thought he won and everything. Um, but they just, just totally just, um, you know, defeated him in that aspect. So Tony basically sacrifices like you can't wield the Infinity Stones. Like, yeah. it kills you. Yeah. It's just too much power, yeah. too much yeah. gamma radiation. So, so so Tony dies in a real. To, uh, to 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 back up a little bit, um, another aspect of um, you know, the battle was when um, when uh, a callback to the um, Age of Ultron movie where um, um, Captain America just before the movie ended, mm-hmm. you know, he was like, you know, Avengers. Then right. cut to the credits and everything. So this movie, yeah. he does it again. Yeah. So he says Avengers Assemble. Yep. My crowd just went, oh, it was like we're <laughs> at a game. You know, he's like, oh, man, you know, you're ready for, for the Avengers to just, you know, just take them out. And then you had this <laughs> crazy fight scene that, I mean, it was one of the best fight scenes I've ever seen in, in a, in a, in a um, movie. Effects have came out long way since, like you know, um, I, I can't even think of another fight scene in another movie where it was just this crazy, mm-hmm. you know. And like you say, uh, they took the balls. Yeah, I mean, they took the um, you know, the glove is is like a ball, you know, Black Panther, um, yeah. Spider Man, you yeah. know, Iron Man, and everybody. Um, Spider Man turned on Insta Kill mode. Oh, uh, Insta Kill mode. <laughs> that was a callback to the um, the first Spider Man right, movie. Right, right, You know, um, um, when when you know he couldn't control that and everything. So now he finally gets to use it here. Uh-huh. You know, fan service. Um, so yeah, so so Captain America says that and assembles all of you know everyone <laughs> together. That was such a great, 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 great scene. You know, in 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 the, um in battle and everything. Yeah. So the climax is excellent. Uh, the climax was awesome. Tremendous, tremendous ending to that movie. Yeah, uh, yeah, really, really, yeah. really just. And 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 Ooh. also, um, with with Tony, you know, Tony, they had a couple great moments. One, they every uh, uh, two key people had to have their moment with Tony before he, you know, because he sacrificed himself essentially. Mm-hmm. Um, so that was Spider Man because he was so heartbroken over that, you know, him bringing. You know, Peter into he couldn't leave Peter. Yeah, yeah. He couldn't leave he, Peter. He couldn't, yeah, yeah. That's it's what been, that was. What that's what brought the whole thing. And that's what brought Cap, That's what brought uh, Iron Man into the fold. Yes. Was he couldn't stand yes, knowing yes. that he could save Peter and he didn't. You have had to see Spider Man the first Homecoming movie mm-hmm. in order to you know get the whole context and everything. Um, but he couldn't do that. So he had his moment with um Peter Parker 
as the reverse moment, a lot of the movie mirrored Infinity War as a reverse mm-hmm. moment of when Peter left. Right. You know, um, Peter was all emotional. Such a good scene with him and, um, you know, um, Robert Downey Jr. and Peter and um, Tom Holland. And then you had um, Gwyneth Paltrow, yeah. who was there from the beginning mm-hmm. to end off the scene. And she said, she told Tony, uh, because they, they sort of prefaced it in a little begin, beginning, in the beginning of the movie, where um, Tony is so driven, um, and um, Pepper Potts says a line about, you know, you can never rest or something, like, to that effect. Right. And round about to this point where, you know, she comes in and says, all right, you know, she's all teary-eyed and everything, but just happy, and she knows that he's about to, um, you know, pass away. Um, you can rest now. Yeah. You know, that man, that, that in my theater had so many people crying. I heard so many sniffles. It was dead silent, (laughs) dead silent. You know, so many sniffles and everything, you know, in the movie, um, sobbing and stuff. You know, I I may even have like a, you know, a a, a little bit of a, you know, smidge of a tear. I mean, you spent all these time with these characters, you know, and it affected you so much. With the, those those you know particular moments, and they just kept hitting you, hitting you, oh. hitting you mm-hmm. over and over with the emotional um, effects of things that happened you know in um, previous movies and led up to right now. So that those those were great acting. This movie was a great acting character driven movie, mm-hmm. um, plot driven, but big great character moments that the actors actually got a chance to actually act you know in this movie. Well, Gwyneth Patrick was another, I mean, you could call her a prestige actress. Yes, yes, she's prestige. I mean, these are people that win, win Oscars and are bringing right, that sort right, of right. pathos to these roles. Uh, I thought Pepper showing up in the Iron Man suit was awesome. <laughs> yeah, that was pretty decent. I thought that yeah. was pretty, pretty great. Great, great call back to Iron Man 3, yep. where it's like, what the hell is Pepper doing in the costume? But she was in Iron Man 3 in the cost, in yep. a, um in a, um Iron Man suit. Yep. So, yeah. So that's sort of the climax of the movie. And we get sort of a Return of the King situation at the end. Where yeah. you have Tony's funeral. And then you get probably three or four different... Every character sort of gets their send-off. The yeah, send-off. Where we're at one point, okay, the movie can end off here. But essentially, you had to have Thor, yeah. you know, get his send-off. Is Thor going to be in Guardians 3? Oh, oh man. man. That was... That's, that would be awesome. Hey, if he's in Guardians 3... A Thor. That Thor is going to be that the Thor. Maybe the deal with Chris Hemsworth was like, I'm not getting in Thor shape anymore. <laughs> He's like, I'm not doing that. It's ridiculous. Put me in something where I can just wear sweatpants. I'll be in all the movies. And I can interact with Rocket. Yeah, just <laughs> interact with the rabbit. <laughs> the rabbit. That's all I want. Just a, me in a rabbit movie. Okay, put me in Guardians. That was a great, um, you know, great, great way to send him off. And then you got um, um, the funeral. Yeah. You know, Tony Stark's funeral. It was a couple callbacks there that were super crazy. The one with um, uh, John Favreau, Happy, and his daughter I'll talking about cheeseburgers. Yeah, I'll get you all the cheeseburgers. You <sighs> they already hit you with the Tony yeah, thing. Right? enough. And enough. then, you know, they come with the whole cheat. It's like, oh, come on now. So- you know? <laughs> I liked I liked what, I liked how the, the very, very end of the movie, uh-huh. how Cap left, like what Cap decided to do. Oh, yeah. And, you knew, and, and, and yeah. it's so, you know... Uh, it's so it makes a lot of sense for him, mm-hmm. uh, being who he is and one, and being a man out of time and a wise and warrior for him to go back. And my guess, based on what we see, is he goes to four, goes back to forty five and just sort of swim, probably swims ashore. Like, up, oh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I made it. I'm, 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 I made it. I'm back. I'm, I'm ready to have my last dance. Cap has really a tragic history throughout mm-hmm. this whole thing because in Captain America, the first Avenger. You know, he got his whole life got really cut when he went into that ice and everything. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So he's missing a whole life experience. He's a man out of time, like you said. So he has he has you know transported to the future, and it has with him being such a soldier. Yeah. He pretty much got um 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 he pretty much went back to being a soldier instead of actually living his life. Right. You know, he never got a chance to do that. So with this movie. You know, it gave in the whole time thing and everything, you know, plot device. Um, it gave him a chance to go back and live his life, which made it a really good, happy ending. Because at the end of um, the first Avenger, you know, him and that the exchange with him and Peggy was mm-hmm. that um, we're I want to have that last dance. You know, we were going, we're going to have they were talking about they want to have that last dance mm-hmm. and everything. And here and they couldn't do it then. 
Now they got that last dance, which made it a happy ending. For to them. have, you know, for Cap to have stayed so, you know, yes. never found another, any sort of, other no, no, even, no. even Peggy's yeah. own niece. Dude, he was, de- he was dedicated to the mission. Mm-hmm. Always dedicated to the mission. You know, he could have whined and cried about being out of time, uh, you know, making you feel sorry for himself and everything. But he was never that type of character. Chris Evans played this guy super good. That's why, he, for me, he was one of my fa- His arc is one of my favorites throughout the whole series and everything, the Captain America arc. He never complained. He just stuck to his mission. Mm-hmm. You know, throughout the Winter Soldier, you know, he, he, he doubted, you know, America's ideals and everything, being that he came from the Civil War area era but he still was on his mission he was on the, the the right of good you know and and always fighting that good fight that he established for himself back in the first avenger mm-hmm. and up till now he is such a good leader rocket made that um that comment in the movie about this guy's pretty good at that you know, as far as <laughs> making those speeches and everything yeah. like, and paul rose like yeah you know scott lady's like yeah yeah he is pretty good that's love, Captain America. I love the America's ass thing. That was so yeah, funny. That, was funny. He was, that is yeah. America's ass. And, it is. <laughs> and, 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 and Chris Evans, he's sort of naturally comedic because in his um, Fantastic Four stuff, he was the, you know, he was the comic relief in no, that movie. He was movie. in another team movie. Yeah, 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 exactly. Right, right, right. So he has those chops and stuff uh, that he never really got to use as Captain America, which really showed his acting range, you know, in a, in a big way. But, um, but yeah, the movie... Capped off with Cap having that dance with Peggy at the end. Great way to finish I, it. I want to see... Because the, 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 the things that are open... Right? New Guardians, right? Mm-hmm. New Spider-Man. Okay. Um, That's coming know, out in a obviously, couple months. Yeah, I was, I, I talk at a, I was talking to uh, Holly last night. I was talking uh-huh. to my wife and I said... I said, man, I'm excited for a new Spider-Man movie. That's going to be a long wait. And then I said, until July. <laughs> <laughs> Such a long yeah, wait. Right? They oh, got it. They man. got it rocking. You know, before you'd see a movie like this, and you'd be like, "When's the next one out?" And you look at it, and you'd be a like, "Couple years." Yeah. Well, uh, the next one is mm, Batman and Robin. So after <laughs> that, you know, you'd have you'd have like these uh, these bombs would like soak superhero movies yeah, for ten years. Right, you know, that right. doesn't happen anymore. No, nope, not at all. Disney made us a promise. Well, Marvel made us a promise. Mm-hmm. Disney completed the promise. And that was, if you keep putting a quarter into this machine, <laughs> we will keep coming back. Uh, that's what all the end credit sequences are all about. Mm-hmm. That's the type of synergy that they've been able to mm-hmm. generate. And mm-hmm. I hope, you know, uh, they keep doing it. I mean, I feel like there's going to be, there has to be profitability in this movie. <laughs> well, I mean, it shows that um, you can do something or attempt something that, you know, not a lot of other companies even attempt to mm-hmm. do, you know, and keep doing it and people will keep coming back. It just shows, it goes to show you that if you keep, if you keep working and keep, um, you know, people talk about fan service and how, you know, the fan service is a, to a small contingent. So why would you try to um, 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 cater to them when you got all these people you can, you know, cater towards and make the most money? But it goes to show you that these movies over the year, that little fan um, niche that you thought was just small is actually a big thing. It's because it started small. So the number of people that probably read Iron Man comics, mm-hmm. that probably knew about like Tony's origin story mm-hmm. in Vietnam and all that mm-hmm. stuff and knew that they changed the, you know, the first... 30 Iron Man, he was like, you know, right. silver. And right. then they changed him to be the new the right. color stuff. Like, that's a small, small little little snippet of the right. movie going public. Right. But when you build more, you let you say, hey, there's more depth here, right? Mm-hmm. And you, you sort of expand that. Now, mm-hmm. that sliver is much bigger. Like, the, the pure portion of the movie going public that know all that stuff is right. enormous. Yeah. So you've created your own... Fans, so doing more fan service at the end makes sense, yeah. Because this is this is this is your creation. But but also too, think about those who have been with this, you know, for so long. Mm-hmm. Like you know, you got forty year olds and everything who, before even the MCU stuff came out, wish this type of thing was there when right. they were kids. Oh yeah. So when they're grown, these people have families now. Yeah. They're taking their family, five, four, five, you know, six, you know, members of their family to these movies and adding into the pot. Where it used to be, where it was just them by themselves. Yeah. So you got that multiplication there, to where of course it's going to be. You got YouTube, you got YouTubers out here dedicating their lives to like reactions and 
you know, different stuff, um, you know, involved with these movies that are young. Yeah. You know, yeah. that are, um, that, that the only reason that they're probably into this is because their dads or moms, mainly their dads, yeah. <laughs> you know, were um, probably into this and now they're into it. You know, you got females you, who were never really a part or even catered to um, um, as far as, you know, the comic book industry and everything. Now they have their own, like, fans and they have their own cosplay and everything. I mean, who's the most powerful character in the MCU right now? Who is it? Captain Marvel. Captain Marvel. Woman. Yeah, a woman. Exactly. You know, and, and the the ladies, females, they love her. They love cosplaying. And, you know, it's a great way to bring, like, the if diversity, if you want to call it, you know, into, like, this whole thing. Because you need it. You need it in order to um, continue it, in order to elevate and to keep it going. Or else, if you just have it into one thing, it's not going to really last. And that's what this era of movie making is done versus the pre-MCU era where right. it was a contention of... Um, um, it's this thing on the last, you know, superhero fatigue, you right. know, getting tired of all these stupid, you know, daredevils and Batman and Robins, things that weren't really what, going anywhere. It's because people before they could only make a half ass superhero movie because and the reason they can only do it half ass is because it mm -hmm. costs too much money to make it look as good as. This. Yes. Yes. So yes. you need the budget you get from yes. this, this, the biggest movie of all time to make superhero fights look right so before when we were younger mm -hmm. you could only get a half-assed superhero movie right like you can only they can only use half their ass because they can, <laughs> half their ass. yeah they've used Just half when, their ass when you get to avengers is a whole ass <laughs> it's america's ass America's ass. <laughs> <laughs> so if you only you can only do so much with the budget uh -huh. and when you think about you know special effects used to be you know, a lot harder to make look right. Yeah. And when you think of things like even just Scarlet Witch's power, right? Mm -hmm. How it makes things red. Mm -hmm. Just making something like that look good was impossible until you get to about now. So you need, you have this intersection of technology mm -hmm. and the budgetary necessities are being mm -hmm. met by this film because, again, we came up with our side of the bargain, which is keep putting the quarters in the machine. I love that. So it's really I love the that fans. analogy. I mean, because I, I know all the users. I was, I was quarter. I want to see more. Mm -hmm. keep, mm -hmm. keep, keep, I, you know, keep taking my money, Marvel. Yeah. When they when they were sold to Disney, you know, it's like okay, is Mickey Mouse going to be involved with these movies? That would have been neat if Mickey would have come out. Magical Mickey come out. Oh. <laughs> Maybe a Mickey bunch of a the, bunch of brooms come walking oh, out of the portal. Oh man, that is funny. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mickey with the Infinity Gauntlet. <laughs> Infinity Gauntlet and an axe, <laughs> just chopping up the brooms and they're getting smaller and smaller. Um, but yeah, it's it's a um, it's the end of an era, mm -hmm. and you know I'm, I'm reading stuff on Twitter about kids saying, okay, I've I've been with these movies since I was seven. Yeah. You know, all the way up until they're like 18 right now. You know, they've grown up. This is their Star Wars. Yeah. You know, really this is. is their era. This is their you know, this is their Star Wars, like I said. Um, it's, a, it's, a, it's a thing to remember, and I'm not sure if it's you know ever going to be duplicated. It's a, Of course, there's going to be more movies because they can't end this because it makes so much money. How could you? You know, I it would mean, be, why it would, would be, you? It would be, honestly, if, if I was a Disney stockholder uh, of any significant amount, and they <laughs> said, we're not going to make any more of these, uh -huh. I would revolt. I would be voting, like, right. get, get those guys yeah. out of there. You right. get me someone, <laughs> you get me someone that wants to make more of these. <laughs> But um, I'm, 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 I'm happy um, as being a, a lifelong comic book fan. This has been a really great, you know, uh, it's been a very affecting experience for me, mm -hmm. you know, as uh, something uh, as a movie could be to, to really have it pay off in this. And I'm so happy to, 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 to st I guess, still be alive <laughs> to experience something like that. Stan Lee passed away just before this movie happened. Although I'm um, guessing they told him out. Yeah, they, they probably, probably told him out. He, probably, they, got they, he probably got to see it and everything, you know. Um, but he created him and Steve Ditko, Jack Kirby, and, you know, um, um, all those creators back from the 60s. Kevin Feige said, the answer is right there in the comic book. So if you're having issues on how to deal with these characters, DC... The answer is right there in the book. Yeah. So just follow the template. It's all, the playbook is already there in front of you. Kevin Feige said, Stan, we're, we're, all we're doing is you're trying to do with Stan and Steve. And um, I mean, Stan and um, Jack and um, Steve, you know, tried to do and put it on the screen. And they have accomplishments, stuck the landing like a champ. I think this is this is the type of it's a culture changer. It's yes. not it's not just a big yes. movie. It's yes. not just, you know. It's not just something that's a big success. Yes. You know, it's been since, like you said, probably uh -huh. Star Wars, the first Star Wars. The first, yeah. You've seen a, a real, like, um, a real uh, cultural shift like this. Mm -hmm. 
it's yeah. so popular that mm -hmm. these characters are all going to be everyone's going to know them for the next 150 years right. um it's it's basically what they've effectively done is they've started a new mythology Mm -hmm. um for western well, world culture right yeah for yeah. world culture like everybody is going to mm -hmm. have some buying in this if you say i'm more of an iron man type until we're you know until we die right people are going to know what that means yeah yeah you yeah. know the same way people in the ancient world knew about ulysses and knew about mm -hmm. you know um knew about achilles mm -hmm. now we have these new these new heroes yes and these, these new myths right that these, are going to mm -hmm. be important to the culture and they're going to stay important to our yep culture. yep yep they took c-list characters and made them a-list over a batman and a superman think about that it's because they're not archetypes they're more relatable yes super i mean it was always a thing with marvel where their their characters were more down to earth mm -hmm. but um they they've done a, it was it's a hell it's been a hell of accomplishment you know thank you um Kevin Feige yeah first of all thank you Stan Lee for uh, and Jack Kirby and uh, Steve Ditko um for you know creating this universe that that it was a pretty much a handoff to the movie stuff with mm -hmm. Kevin Feige and his gang but thank you Kevin Feige and his his staff and all you know Marvel for even um making an attempt to do this unprecedented. You know, uh, form of filmmaking, yeah. which um, I, I, I if if you can do another ten years of this, I'll be ha I can die happy. You know, just <laughs> I mean, just, maybe another thirty, I'll forty, put, I'll fifty keep years put, though. Uh, yeah, fi yeah, yeah, <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah. Let's I'm not, not gonna say like, yeah, exactly, right? <laughs> not yeah. that old, I'll man. keep putting the quarter into the machine, like Scott said, <laughs> as long as I keep living. Yeah. Uh, and absolutely, thank you to, uh, of course, the production staff too. Yeah. Uh, the the. The thousands and thousands of animators whose names are, are too they're too <laughs> yeah, many to the, read the, the, uh, and nameless, but they're right there in the credits and, of and course, everything. The actors who you know, the actors and actresses who breathe life into this universe. I who, mean who took the chance with those contracts mm -hmm, mm -hmm. to um I mean to, at this point it's like a family. So do you value money? Of course you value money, but the experience of the the, the movie making has brought them together yeah. to a point where, you know, it was contagious with everyone who came on. You wouldn't have a lot of these like Tilda Swans, you yeah. know, Gwyneth Paltrow's Brie Larkin. Persons, um, that are Oscar winning right. movie actors or actresses. Prestige. To, yeah, Prestige, you know, uh, kind of, uh, um, um, Cumberbatch and everything um, to come and make these movies. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and the way they've done it, I mean, I think there's probably, like I could conceive of maybe four or five ways to play some of these characters, right? But there's literally an infinite an infinite number of ways for them There's to have been so done many, wrong. So many, so many ways to go. To get so many home runs. I mean, even you know someone that hasn't been around the whole time, but mm -hmm. like Tom Holland playing Spider Man is a standout <laughs> uh, yeah. to me. Um, yeah. You know, of course, we talked. To, I mean, you can just check our podcast if you want to hear what we think about Chris Evans and Robert Downey Jr. Plug, plug. Download the podcast. <laughs> uh, <laughs> if you want, uh, but yeah. So, so for me, you know, that's that's kind of where I am. I I feel like. It's it's an incredible ending. Um, the, the the stories that were closed, and by that I mean uh, Cap and uh, Cap and Iron Man. Iron Man and Thor. Those stories were well. Thor's wasn't closed. Thor's still around. Well, yeah, Thor. Yeah, you're but right. Thor's still there. Cap and Iron Man may you know mainly um their story. You know Black that Widow. that closure that we got right. knowing that Cap got to live that life. Yes. You know, first of all, uh, my my closing thing is I want to see. I mean, I kind of want to see the animated series of Cap. Coming back to forty five, and what what happens like with Cap? Because you can do more than just he's just chilling. Well, and not it, it doesn't even have to be an animated series, although that would be awesome. Mm -hmm. But um, Chris Evans, if he ever decides to come back, you know, we don't really need a Captain America, um, you know, movie. It would just be the fun. It would be fun to see a small movie mm -hmm. that doesn't have to be a big budget, like a villain and everything, but a small movie with maybe a romantic comedy or whatever with Chris Evans. And Peggy Carter, you know, they could do one of Haley those Atwell. Home, they could do one of those coming home from war movies about 1946 yes. with those guys. With just those guys. I mean, just, I'd just, watch it. Yeah, yeah. Can't be that. Can't cause that You got my right? quarter there, Kevin. <laughs> we'll throw our quarter in the machine. machine. Quarter in the machine. Right. You got us. So we're give, we're giving you our money. So that's that's yeah. what I have to say about that. That, you know, my, my closing is that um, it's simple. Keep making more of these. Keep me happy. Keep me putting the quarter in the machine. I'll I will keep going. We will keep going. We're the, you're you're the reason why we're even doing this nerd encyclopedia stuff right here. So um, we definitely appreciate it. And thank you so much to our viewers, to our listeners, uh, stopping by. Those of you who we got to meet a couple weeks ago at the convention, 
uh, at Steel City Con. You know, thanks so much for stopping by our booth. We really liked uh, getting to meet a lot of the people in the community, taking pictures with some of the really great awesome. cosplayers, awesome. doing some really yeah. awesome interviews Keep with creators. Up. Keep um, it up. It will be, it will, it's going to be a lot more stuff could this coming year from Nerdcyclopedia. So, you know, log on to obviously to our website, nerdcyclopedia.com. Definitely send us some feedback, nerds at nerdcyclopedia, you know, dot com. Or um, you just like Watchmen a lot. Oh, watching yeah, Watchmen. Yeah. Or, or Sam Scott Cyclopedia. is watching Watchmen. Yeah. Um, we cannot wait for that show. That's going to be our MCU. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the Nerd Encyclopedia movie. So, so, so if you love that, you know, f- uh, subscribe to our start, subscribe to all our podcasts. We, yeah. we, we want your feedback. We want your, you know, input and everything. And we'll give back to you. Yeah. But with, in, in podcast form. Yeah. Super. So thanks so much, guys. Thanks uh, a bunch. Yeah. Thank you uh, for watching our first, you know, um, official video. And if you we didn't like it, do... we're going to disable the comments. <laughs> uh, easy. easy to get that taken care of. We hope to bring you more, so. Yeah. So let me ask you this. In okay. the Nerd Cyclopedia movie universe. <laughs> Nerd Cyclopedia movie who's, universe. Who's playing, who's playing you, Sam? <laughs> who's playing Sam? In the, in the, in the, in Idris the Elba! Idris Elba? Okay. He okay. better be playing me. Okay. So. Who's playing you in Chris the Hemsworth. Home? But Chris Hemsworth. The, 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 okay, yeah, that's yeah, yeah, Chris yeah, yeah. He's yeah. going to have more beard than me, and I'm going to tell him not to get the hair, but that's who, that's who we're going to get. Guys, see you when we see you. See you.